Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, in an interesting twist, have all decided to join BRICS. Since they left the economic community of West African states, ICAWAS, and expelled French forces from their territories, they have gained the ability to make independent decisions that benefit their countries without facing external obstacles. Recent reports from Burkina Faso suggest that terrorism has significantly decreased since cutting ties with France. Additionally, Niger has emerged as the fastest growing economy in Africa since severing its connections with France. Last night, I dedicated a substantial amount of time to researching the current revolutionary situation in these African countries to gain a deeper understanding of their new leaders and their plans following the severance of ties with Western countries. I was genuinely amazed by my findings. This is where Russia and BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa come into play. The potential involvement of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso in joining BRICS with assistance from Russia is of significant interest. These countries shift away from Western influence and their alignment with alternative geopolitical blocs such as BRICS could lead to considerable changes in their economic and political landscapes. By distancing themselves from Western powers, these nations are seeking to establish new partnerships that align with their development goals and sovereignty. The reduction in terrorism reported in Burkina Faso alongside Niger's economic growth suggests that these moves are beginning to yield positive outcomes. Engagement with BRICS could provide these countries with new avenues for economic development, trade, and investment, reducing their dependence on Western aid and influence. Additionally, Russia's involvement could bring about strategic military and political support, further stabilizing these nations and helping them achieve their national objectives. To ensure a better understanding, let me start from the very beginning. It is no secret that BRICS is on track to eliminate the U.S. dollar in all of its global trade and transactions by the end of 2024. The bloc aims to prioritize local currencies over the U.S. dollar to strengthen their native economies and businesses. The alliance is also convincing other developing countries to follow suit and settle payments in local currencies for cross-border transactions. This strategy is expected to enhance the value and stability of these countries' currencies, strengthening them significantly against the dollar. By adopting local currencies for international trade, BRICS nations seek to reduce their dependence on the U.S. dollar, thereby mitigating the influence of U.S. monetary policy on their economies. This move could boost the economic growth of developing nations, propelling them towards greater prosperity. The full implementation of this initiative is estimated to have a significant impact on the value of the U.S. dollar, potentially leading to a substantial decline. Such a decline could have far-reaching implications for the geopolitical and socioeconomic influence of the United States on the global stage. Some experts have likened this potential shift to a severe blow to the United States prompting concerns from the U.S. and European Union about the broader ramifications. Additionally, there are ongoing discussions about the involvement of various nations in the BRICS group and the potential effects on their economies. Specifically, there are questions about whether Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger will choose to join BRICS and how that decision might unfold. If these countries align with BRICS, they could benefit from stronger economic ties and increased political support from the bloc. Now, as we all know, the West African countries of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger are home to abundant reserves of valuable minerals that play a crucial role in the evolving global economy. Burkina Faso stands as the fourth largest producer of gold in Africa, contributing significantly to the continent's gold output. Mali, on the other hand, achieved a remarkable gold production of 66.2 tons in 2022, further solidifying its position as a key player in the global gold market. Meanwhile, Niger holds the distinction of being the seventh largest producer of uranium worldwide, boasting high-grade ore that is in high demand. Gold is increasingly being recognized as a reliable store of value in a world that is moving away from its heavy reliance on the U.S. dollar. The strategic importance of gold is growing as countries and investors seek safe havens for their wealth amidst global economic uncertainties. For Burkina Faso and Mali, their substantial gold reserves present an opportunity to leverage this asset for economic stability and growth. Uranium, on the other hand, is set to power the growing global demand for clean energy through nuclear power. As the world shifts towards sustainable energy sources to combat climate change, Niger's uranium reserves become even more critical. 
The high-grade uranium ore from Niger is essential for nuclear power plants, which are increasingly being seen as a viable option for reducing carbon emissions and providing a reliable source of clean energy. The geopolitical significance of these mineral resources is underscored by recent diplomatic engagements. On January 29, 2024, the Prime Minister of Niger, Ali Mohamed Loons, warmly welcomed a substantial delegation from the BRICS Group. This meeting highlights the growing interest of BRICS nations in the mineral wealth of West Africa and their potential role in fostering economic development and strategic partnerships in the region. The involvement of BRICS could lead to increased investments in mining infrastructure, technology transfer, and better market access for these countries' mineral exports. This high-profile meeting underscores the growing attention and commitment of BRICS countries towards Niger, a nation with abundant natural resources despite being landlocked. The substantive discussions revolved around the consolidation of economic and trade ties between Niger and the BRICS member states, namely Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Of particular focus were potential collaborations in the mining, agriculture, energy, and transport infrastructure sectors. Niger is keenly interested in advancing its transport infrastructure, recognizing its pivotal role in driving economic progress. BRICS, renowned for their expertise and substantial resources in this domain, are well positioned to play a pivotal role in bolstering Niger's infrastructure development. Improving transport infrastructure is crucial for landlocked countries like Niger to facilitate trade, enhance connectivity, and promote overall economic development. Currently, Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali have formed an alliance called AES, Alliance of Sahel States, which makes them appear as a unified entity. This suggests that if Niger becomes part of BRICS, Burkina Faso and Mali would likely be involved as well, given their close political and economic ties. The integration of these countries into BRICS could lead to a significant boost in their economic development through increased investments, technology transfer, and enhanced trade relations. On January 28, 2024, the military leaders of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger made a significant announcement regarding their country's membership in the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. They jointly declared their decision to withdraw from the regional bloc, signaling a shift towards forming new alliances that better align with their national interests and development goals. This move highlights their desire for greater autonomy and strategic partnerships that can offer more substantial economic benefits and support their sovereignty. The potential involvement of these countries in BRICS could transform the geopolitical and economic landscape of West Africa. Due to what they deemed inhumane sanctions imposed by ECOWAS following the coups that brought them to power, the leaders of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger simultaneously broadcasted a joint statement on state television in all three countries. The statement announced their decision to withdraw from ECOWAS, asserting their complete sovereignty over the matter. They criticized ECOWAS for allegedly deviating from the noble ideals of its founding fathers and the principles of Pan-Africanism, which the bloc had upheld for nearly 50 years. The leaders contended that ECOWAS, under external influence, had strayed from its mission to ensure the well-being of its member states and their populations. In response to this announcement, ECOWAS issued a statement expressing that it had not been formally notified of the decision by the three countries to leave the bloc. ECOWAS emphasized that its protocol stipulates a withdrawal process that takes up to one year to complete. The bloc underscored the importance of Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali within the community and reiterated its commitment to seeking a negotiated solution to the ongoing political challenges. ECOWAS, a 15-nation bloc formed in 1975, has historically been considered West Africa's premier political and regional authority. However, the organization has faced significant challenges to its credibility in recent years. This was particularly evident during the Niger crisis of 2023, when President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted in a coup that garnered widespread support from the citizens of Niger. Instead of diligently exploring all available political avenues to resolve the impasse, ECOWAS seemed to echo the imperialistic and confrontational demands of colonial powers, which exacerbated tensions and demonstrated a lack of sensitivity to the local population's aspirations. It was only after Russia and allied nations like Mali and Burkina Faso threatened retaliatory action that ECOWAS retracted its plans to intervene militarily in Niger. 
In the aftermath of these events, former French colonies swiftly terminated their military partnerships with France and withdrew from existing colonial agreements with European nations, turning instead to Russia for support. This shift in alliances prompted the three Sahel nations to enter into a mutual defense pact and establish the AES following the signing of the Liptako Gorma Charter in 2023. The charter, named after the historical region of Liptako Gorma, received extensive coverage in the media. The three nations insinuated that ECOWAS had remained inactive when terrorists, operating under Western-supported regimes, perpetrated daily massacres of their citizens. They claimed that their assumption of power stemmed from their inability to witness their people endure relentless and needless suffering and loss of life due to preventable terrorist activities, which they alleged were advantageous to the West. They accused the West of displaying sympathy towards terrorists and questioned their commitment to combating terrorism. Additionally, they expressed perplexity at ECOWAS's sudden vocal stance and imposition of sanctions aimed at harming their citizens, suggesting that this response only came due to demands from France, Europe, and America. They deemed this stance unacceptable, indicating that it signified the impossibility of safeguarding their interests within ECOWAS, given the predominant influence of the West over the regional bloc. Consequently, they announced their decision to permanently withdraw from ECOWAS. Regarding the difference between this pact and the Military Cooperation Pact of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso, signed months ago amidst ECOWAS threats, Mali's defense minister explained to journalists that the new alliance will be a combination of military and economic efforts between the three countries. He emphasized that their priority is to fight against terrorism in the three countries. Moving forward, Russia has made significant investments in Mali and Burkina Faso, leading to substantial geopolitical shifts in the region, such as the expulsion of French soldiers from Mali in 2022 and the withdrawal of UN forces in 2023. Burkina Faso has followed suit, and Niger has also taken similar steps, except for the expulsion of French forces. Russia's presence in Mali and Burkina Faso is substantial, encompassing both military and economic dimensions. Even in Niger, Russia had to provide military and economic assistance including the deployment of Wagner Group forces through Mali, as the country has evolved into a significant Russian ally in the Sahel region. However, despite Russia's support for Niger, it pales in comparison to the extensive existing infrastructure and influence they possess in both Mali and Burkina Faso. Moscow has therefore encouraged these three nations to cooperate closely, forming a symbiotic relationship where any military and economic initiatives driven or funded by Russia in Mali and Burkina Faso would yield mutual benefits for Niger. French military personnel, who had access to crucial information on the ground in Mali and Niger before their departure, influenced the decision to leave, despite staying silent on the matter. The recent agreement will require them to acknowledge and address the factors that led to their withdrawal. Russia's substantial military presence in the Sahel region, particularly in Mali and Niger, has been granted unrestricted operational freedom in Niger, similar to its activities in Mali. This includes the direct deployment of certain military equipment from Russia to Niger, bypassing the previous route through Mali. As a result, Russia now holds comparable access to Niger as it does to Mali and Burkina Faso, effectively solidifying the integration of the Sahel Trinity. As BRICS embarks on charting a new economic course for its member states to replace the dominant Western economic models, it is anticipated that the new Sahel bloc will eventually align itself with the BRICS economic framework. Consequently, there may be reduced reliance on institutions such as ECOWAS, the African Union, or any other regional blocs historically associated with serving the interests of the Western world. This shift is occurring as the once dominant Western influence on the continent appears to be diminishing, indicating a significant transformation in the geopolitical and economic landscape of the region. In any case, we would appreciate your feedback on this topic. If you find our content valuable, we encourage you to subscribe, like, and share. Additionally, we welcome your comments in the section below.